I read this morning or last night that Carrie Fisher died. And she was only 60 years old. And she probably should have lived till 85. So she lost her 25 years. It's really sad because I was just talking about how I want my 25 years back. And then Carrie Fisher, who is, of course, part of the mainstream mental health paradigm, dies of a heart attack. Nothing to do with any kind of mental health stuff. A heart attack. And I think a lot of people die of heart attacks who are on psych meds for a long period of time. So I guess it's a really hard choice because if one doesn't take the meds, then one is likely going to be very unstable. And it's hard to relate to people. Whereas if one takes them, then there's a risk of something like a heart attack happening at, at some point. And even if it's not directly from the meds, it could be also because the meds tend to make people gain weight because they make people really hungry. It's just really sad, it's really tragic. And they're saying things online about how big of an advocate she was, and I didn't really follow her stuff, so I'm not, I don't doubt it, though. But it's just tragic that her death shows that being on medications for long periods of time isn't good either. I'm fortunate that I'm only on lithium. So I'm wondering who wants to get their 25 years back. Because Carrie Fisher's not the only one who's dying at 60 of heart attacks. I know somebody who was probably a little bit younger than 60 and died of a heart attack. This morning I spent some time packing up some of my stuff because I'm preparing my place for Airbnb. So hopefully that works out okay. The place I'm going to stay, they know about my mental health condition and they're a little bit concerned. So I'm a little bit stressed about that because maybe they'll turn around and say, oh, it's too risky for you to come here and so I feel like I really want to go there, I don't want to stay here, yet nothing's final until I actually get there. And I feel some definite anxiety feelings, like stress and body pains. and So yeah, I'm moving everything into my second bedroom and then Hopefully just locking it up. And I have a really old car which I'm planning to drive to California and my, my family's not that happy about that so I was thinking maybe I'll get a new car. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or not but... And I was thinking about psychosis and mania as a healing process and and I feel like they're actually bringing us back closer to our hearts. So it is painful because we use the mind to sort of paint over our heart and explain things away. 
And I was thinking about the gesture of giving a pill and how that can be a placebo and it still works. Well, emotional crisis needs a gesture of unconditional love, just as a physical illness needs a gesture of some type of physical pill or physical surgery. Emotional crisis needs an emotional remedy. And that's obviously not judgment. And I was also thinking about how I feel like there's times when I need unconditionally loving gestures. And even going to the psych ward can be one of those gestures because people don't get thrown in jail. They don't necessarily get the best treatment, but they don't get the worst treatment either. But I feel like I need to give unconditionally loving gestures because if that's the medicine I need, then I also have to give that medicine. Otherwise, I'm just saying I need this and, and I'm not giving that. And I also thought about how receiving somebody with loving receptivity is sort of a feminine energy. And there's so much masculine energy in the world of get, 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 success, take, take, earn, strive, goals. And all of that is stress that we don't have enough of this receptive energy of just receiving the distress that actually comes out of all that masculine energy. And I was thinking about E equals MC squared, and if M is the interference pattern of love, C is the speed of light. And one of the speed of lights is, I feel, from the sun, and the other speed of light is actually from our eyes. So. I believe that in order to make a hologram appear from a, an interference pattern, it needs two laser lights in order to record it or something like that. So I feel like between the light of the sun and the light coming out of one's eyes, that's sort of what is meeting the interference pattern in order to create and record this hologram that we experience. But if the interference pattern of love is distorted by thought, then we see that. We see our own thoughts that we're projecting. We're not actually seeing actuality. And so I was thinking about receiving somebody with loving receptivity and, and how it could be possible that what really matters is how the light leaves one's eyes. Is it the light of love? Is it the light of unconditional love? Is it acceptance? And if one's inner light is being distorted by visions and thoughts and words of judgment, then that's what is coming out of the light of one's eyes. And I feel like perception in that state of love is what unfolds the hologram. Whereas if it is distorted by thought, it's not really unfolding actuality.